Sydney Harbour Bridge. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, no more aero tux. Has the UCI finally banned something that might go down well? But not as fast. No, but safer, Dan. Very true. We've also got the world's most comfortable saddle, which features anti-gravity technology, apparently. A new world record for cycling around America and the best Christmas cycling socks you've ever seen. With anti-gravity? No. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Mathieu van der Poel is back, but he's not unbeatable. No, he won his first cyclocross race of the season on Saturday, but on Sunday, Tom Pidcock showed him how it was done. He did indeed, although even on Saturday, van der Poel looked a little bit rusty, didn't he? Ooh, yeah. Now, we also learned this week that pro cycling teams are still looking to other sports for their next big stars. That's right. Bora Hansgrohe last week announced the signing of Anton Pautzer, a ski mountaineer whose laboratory tests have marked him out as off-the-charts talented. Yeah, and if this video is anything to go by, off-the-charts bonkers too. Oh, my word. You would not catch me doing that. <laughs> well, if I did do it, I'd hope someone would catch me. <laughs> Uh, but it'll be interesting to see, won't it, how Pouts affairs in pro cycling. Uh, he does do ski mo as well, as you can see here. That's a yeah. cross between skiing and mountaineering. Thanks, Dan. And he's obviously pretty darn fit. Well, yes, and fearless as well. And you'd imagine the race to sign the male world esports champion must surely be on too. German lightweight rower Jason Osborne can put out 430 watts at threshold indoors, and he's just 71 kilos. Hashtag jealous. Yeah. And finally this week, we learned that pedaling on your top tube is going to be banned from pro cycling. At least that's our take on a press release from the UCI that says there will be stronger rules when it comes to rise positions on their bikes, in particular when descending. Indeed. So, <clears throat> stronger regulations concerning potentially dangerous conduct of riders, such as throwing drinks bottles on the road or within the peloton, brackets, that may pose a threat to following riders, close brackets, and taking up especially dangerous positions on the bike, brackets, especially in descents. Uh, and let's face it, nothing looks more dangerous mm. than sitting on a carbon top tube and pedalling at 90 kilometers You didn't need your laptop, you'd been learning that, hadn't you? Uh, basically, that's the full Froomey though, isn't it? Banned. Or the full Matty Mahorich, I guess he was the original, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was, yeah. Now, it's fair to say that Touch wood, pro cyclists are an extremely skillful bunch because we haven't seen any nasty crashes due to the use of this extreme position in the pro peloton. Mm. But that is exactly why we think the UCI should be applauded for the steps that we think they are taking in this regard. Uh, because they're often criticised, aren't they, for not taking any action until a serious incident occurs, whereas in this instance, they are taking action before said incident occurs. Yeah, it took a long time for Oversox to be banned after they got perilously high, didn't it? But it does actually feel like a serious incident will occur in this it does it? at some point, doesn't it? Uh, secondly, whilst the pros can do it, the fact is that many younger and less skilled cyclists will copy those pros, often on open roads as well. And in this example, that is not a good thing to do. No, Hank copies them all the time and he has no skill. <laughs> so anyway, uh, to be fair, it is harder to copy the way pros go uphill, but I would agree with you though. Cycling on the top tube might be fast, but it's just not necessary. Pros can just go back to the standard aero tuck, or maybe the Marco Pantani human saddlebag, yeah. or, um, well, I see that's probably quite dangerous, isn't it? I think it could well be that Pantani thing. Yeah. Maybe they'll outlaw that as well. Have you got an idea? Dropper posts. You made a yes. video about this, Dan, many years ago. Well, let's check that video out briefly. For the first run, I will be doing it with the dropper seat post down as I see fit. <laughs> There you go. You saw it here first, yeah. didn't you? It would make a lot of sense though, wouldn't it? It would. Because if they outlawed those positions, you could actually sit on your saddle in a low position, couldn't you? And also, so many bikes are already well under the minimum weight set by the UCI that adding the dropper post would still keep them about 6.8 kilos, wouldn't it? Imagine that. Uh, now, obviously, we are speculating as to what positions the UCI may or may not ban. But you've got to wonder whether the praying mantis, elbows resting gently on the top of the bars, might also be banned too. I mean, it's been caught in controversy, hasn't it, for a while? It has, and for exactly the same reasons that I stated before, I hope that position is bad. I mean, if nobody's allowed to do it, then nobody's going to be at a disadvantage, are they? Unless somebody has got those new Spico aero bars that you and Hank talked about last week. Very, very true. 
Actually, if these positions are banned, Speedco could do very well out of this, couldn't well, yes. they? Yes, until the UCI ban them too. Mm. Potentially on a question of aesthetics, they're like a really long oversock, aren't they? And also, they might be a dangerous position because uh, they're so narrow, how can you go around corners? No, well, we did mention this in last week's show, uh, partly because you'd said about how worried you were about being able to go around a corner on them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, we'd love to get your comments as ever on this. Do you think it's right for the UCI to intervene when it comes from a rider's position on their bike descending, or should they be allowed to choose themselves? Uh, moving on, though, they've also been very busy in other regards when it comes to rider safety, not just at what position riders are adopting. So they're also going to give some barrier standards. I think those standards are yet to be decided. They're going to have meetings with key stakeholders. And they're also going to implement a much-needed concussion protocol. Yes, which will be used across all cycling disciplines disciplines, not just road. They put a number of new measures in place when it comes to concussion, but one of them is in training and educating non-medical staff as to tell that as to the telltale signs, sorry, of concussion, including mechanics, sports directors, and even the riders themselves. Yeah, which seems like a great idea. And I think the idea behind it is that the race doctor is not always first at the scene of a crash to inspect a rider and see how they're feeling. So what they're hoping is that these other people that are newly qualified to a degree will be able to make an assessment and then tell the doctor what they've seen. From a rider's perspective though, can you imagine how frustrating it'll be? You crash, like who's to say whether it's serious enough, yeah. and then you've got to stand on the side of the road whilst like a, ra just, a random just, mechanic you, does you, like you, a concussion Well you're just test. looking at your teammate going, don't tell them. <laughs> well yeah, I mean that's why it is so hard to implement a concussion protocol mm. in road cycling isn't it? Because effectively your race is going to be over if you fall off, and, and you could see riders just going, yeah, I didn't, definitely didn't hit my head, no way. No, yeah, but, and perhaps if you, it's your own team mechanic or sports director or fellow teammate, they might not want to say anything either. So lots of work still to be done, but at least it's a step in the right direction. It is, yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, a round of applause to the UCI, I yeah. think. Well done, the UCI. Well done, bravo. So we are at the end of the transition plans. I can't believe it's been six weeks already. That has absolutely flown by, but it's been a very enjoyable six weeks. I've learned a lot from doing the transition plan. It's not a plan that's really demanding and you have to hit these high numbers and you're left after the plan needing a week off because it was so hard. It's a refreshing plan. Uh, yeah, definitely a refreshing plan. I feel ready to hit whatever challenge I've got next. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of challenges in 2021, good ones, of course. But um, yeah, it was a really good plan. I enjoyed the sessions and I learned a lot from them. Doing sessions that I normally wouldn't do, like the pedaling technique sessions and the yoga sessions. I'm definitely going to carry on the yoga sessions because I really did enjoy them. Uh, something different and I feel like they did benefit me on the bike as well. But I'm not going to blab on too much because myself and Ollie have done a finale video around the transition plans that will be coming to the channel very soon. GCN Inspiration now, your chance to win one of three weekly prizes. All you've got to do is submit your best photos or videos that will inspire us to get on our bikes over on the GCN app. Uh, in third place this week, well, if you're in third, you are going to receive a pair of clear GCN Elite water bottles. Ooh, nice. And the person who is in third is Syed Yazen. Uh, and it's a video, Dan. It is. We had a video last week, Sai, when you were off. Uh, this video has been docked points for being in portrait mode. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Um, but it's a good video. Uh, he says, one of the most surreal rides of my life as Dubai shut down its 12-lane motorway just for bikes from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. on a weekend with over 20,000 bikes and 15 kilometres of track through the tallest skyline on planet Earth. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's very cool. I mean, I I remember years and years ago when Brussels City Centre, I think every year they shut down Brussels City Centre to motor vehicle and you can just ride around. There's nothing quite like that feeling of being on wide open roads that aren't open, they're just closed to a general traffic and only open to bikes. Pretty cool, that. Very cool, yes. Uh, second place gets themselves a GSIN Core t shirt in blue plus a GSIN Cobbled Classic tee, and it goes to Marty Collins. Me and my favourite little girl out for a winter morning ride in the cold weather. Nice. Always inspiration isn't it, to see uh, parents with their kids out on bikes enjoying themselves. That's cool. That does look like a nice morning to ride in as well, doesn't it? Uh, right then, first place now, uh, winning our new book. Endurance, uh, How to Cycle Further by Mark Beaumont and Laura Penhow, plus a GCN Red Core t-shirt and two GCN Elite water bottles. That's quite a good prize, isn't it? It is a good prize, yeah. Bumper pack. Uh, anyway, 
The winner is Hozo Mean 83 with this absolute cracker. London to Istanbul, Switzerland. It's another Swiss winner, day seven to eight, the day I crossed the Fluella Pass about 30 kilometers from Davos. Mm. I presume this is from the summer. Doesn't look very yes. wintry in that photo at the moment, but we're all longing for summer at this point. Once you get towards the end of December, it's sort of over winter already, aren't you? Well, I can oh. get through Christmas, and then in the new year, I'm starting to think, roll on spring and summer, and that is the sort of thing I start looking at as inspiration to get me through. Do you know what inspired me this week, right? So, my weekly, uh, well, I would say gravel ride, but it's become a cyclocross ride, and it was getting really, really muddy and rubbish. And then I watched Havre uh, on GCN Race Pass on Sunday, mm. and watching those riders like going through the mud that fast, I'm like, right, next Saturday <laughs> yeah. I'm on it. I, it. It's become the GCN. But the trouble is, you, you're like, yeah, I'm going to go and do that. And when it comes to it, it's a bit like slow mo. Well, it? it is, yeah. But you know, in my head, <laughs> um, it was a good yeah. race, that. Yeah, check it out on Race Pass if yeah. you haven't done so already. Uh, just before we finish with GCN Inspiration, uh, we're actually going to plug our own GCN Club socks for this month. Ooh. As you can see, these are our Christmas socks, which I mentioned at the start of the show. They don't half look nice, don't they? In fact, you're sporting yours, aren't yeah, you, right let now? Yeah, um, well, you say they don't half look nice. On my ankles, maybe not, but uh, there we go. <laughs> Well, I mean, it really makes the ho-ho-ho defined as they're yeah, stretched it's, out around your ankle. It's quite isn't it? stretched, isn't it? But, well, yeah. um, There's a ho and a ho and a ho around each part of your leg there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, these are, of course, the December socks, uh, which you will receive if you are a member of the GCN Club, which we can thoroughly recommend. You don't just get socks. Sometimes you'll get Italian coffee as well. The socks are made in Italy too. But there are also other benefits in that you will get discounts to brands such as Muckoff or Giro, and you'll be on the early bird post uh, when it comes to Black Friday deals, etc. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're going to start with a perler of a Kickstarter campaign that we saw the other day from a company called CycleMate, who promise the world's most comfortable bike seat. Well, I bet it is, because it's got inflatable airbags Ooh. which generate anti-gravity. Sorry, Dan, what? Yeah, well, I didn't think it was plausible either, but you can see it there, written in black and white on the website, right between air circulates and 3D air. But what's 3D air? Well, I didn't know that either, actually. I mean, I had to look it up, although I didn't really get any clearer on what it was. Most of the search results seem to centre around uh, hair dryers, hmm. although that might be the cookies giving me personalised search results. Well, did it say, did you actually mean 3D hair? <laughs> no, no I did look up 3D air. What I, in the end, I decided was that 3D air must be better than 2D air. Yeah. Anyway, what do we know about saddles? They clearly know what they're doing because they had a target to, uh, to raise, should I say, $3,000, and they're well over $50,000 now. I wonder whether a lot of those investors are kind of speculators. You know, they've just invented anti gravity, and although they're marketing it on a bike saddle, <laughs> its applications will go far wider once yeah. you've invested. I mean, well, you actually you wouldn't need those, those airbags, would you? If, you? if you've invented anti gravity, you could sit on carbon rails. Well, and you wouldn't have any weight on them. Just get rid of the saddle altogether, have an anti gravity seat post, and you could just. Over <laughs> they've, well, they, yeah, they've invented two things. They only really needed to invent one. Yeah. Although I wouldn't want the anti-gravity power to run out if I had no saddle. <laughs> Imagine if the battery suddenly went. <laughs> 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 Better to have the airbags, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway, moving on. We also saw another great bit of tech, actually, courtesy of Cycling Science, and it features vibro-tactile technology. This um, was actually part of a paper from Thomas Peters et al from University of Antwerp and they appear to have invented an indoor training setup with a front mounted camera that keeps you training in your aerodynamically optimal position. Okay, So as soon as it senses that you deviate from what's optimal, basically a little device between your shoulder blades starts buzzing <laughs> to kind of zzz, yeah, pull oh, you back into, uh, into line. Sounds like a pain in the neck, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Nice, mate. I nice. can't believe I even said that. We'll move swiftly on Please from do. that terrible joke. To some good news over in the USA because Reggie Miller, the NBA Hall of Famer and cycling enthusiast, 
has been voted to the board of USA Cycling, yeah. which is great news, isn't it? He was among four people who were voted into that board. Another one of those is industry veteran Brendan Quirk. Yeah, now one person who will also know their way around the USA very well after this summer is Keith Morikow. Now you might remember that name because we followed his record-breaking ride where he had to enter 48 mainland US states in one continuous ride. And I say enter, he didn't have to cross them, he mm. could just kind of like nip through a little corner. But uh, anyway, he's just released a video of that ride, which you can check out. And you can see him here on that video right now. Wasn't just doing it for his own goals and ambitions though. Along the way, he raised a decent amount of money for Free Bikes for Kids, which is a self-explanatory charity uh, that gives kids that are most in need of bikes, bikes over in the USA, which is brilliant uh, stuff, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Fantastic aim. Um, now, as well as that brilliant money-raising effort. He did also get the record, of course. Um, he clocked up, this is astonishing really, 11,400 kilometers in 31 days of riding, which means he averaged 368 kilometers per day. If that's not enough, Keith's also 60. Wow. Which is insanely good mileage. Inspirational. I mean, if I could do that in 30 years time, then... Uh... <laughs> I'm very joking, of course. No, that's truly inspirational, so very well done to you. Uh, and some more cool news over in the USA now, because Zwift, who actually have a base in LA, have decided to uh, sponsor the Legions of LA cycling team, which is, of course, run by the coolest man in pro cycling, Justin Williams. It's a two and a half year deal that will help Legion with their newly registered UCI Continental team, which has stacked with talent, plus it will help them with their mission to increase diversity within cycling and fostering a grassroots scene, or the grassroots scene, should I say, in LA and beyond. Mm, good news all round then. Uh, we should move back over to here to some news from the UK though, where we don't really have enough bike lanes, do we? No. Not many at all. Although London is leading the way when it comes to bike lanes in the UK with their cycling super highways. Although until now, they've not had particularly inspirational names, have they? A CS5 being one example. Not anymore though. We Are Possible, which is a climate action group, have run a campaign to rename the cycle super highways and they've announced their results. So we have the Morris Burton Way, which is named after Britain's first black cycling national champion, but a national champion who suffered intense discrimination during his career, including being left off the British Olympic team. But in spite of all of that, he still had a great professional career on the track. Yeah, he did, well respected by his peers too, wasn't he? Mm. He's had a great career in cycling since he finished racing too because he's been running De Vere Cycles, which he does and is doing right up to this day. So well done to you, Morris. And not the only uh, champion cyclist from the UK to have one of those cycling superhighways named after them though. Theo Gegenhart has another one, recent winner of course of the Giro d'Italia, as does the late great Beryl Burton. Yeah, they've shortened Theo's name though, so people don't have to struggle with Gegenhart. Have they? Yeah, it's just like Teo's Way or something like that. <laughs> yeah. um, they, right, had, no. they had a pronunciation guide of Teo Gegenhart's name in a newspaper. I think it was The Telegraph <laughs> recently, yeah. and they got it wrong. <laughs> I saw that. It was in The Jeez. Guardian, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, right, we're going to finish cycling shorts um, with some salutary news here. A reminder to all of us to be considerate with your rubbish and your trash when you're out riding. Because Orlando Weekly, which is a publication that I'm an avid reader of, um, posted a story last week about a manatee nicknamed Schwinn, which will, for reasons will become apparent, who had managed to finally free itself from a bike tire that had been stuck around it for over a year, which is just I know. Tragic. Isn't it's it, all really? to think about, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a big reminder to us all that when we go out on our bikes, we should come back with pretty much everything we went out with, and that includes gel wrappers, inner tubes, and both your tyres, please. Yes, please do. Yeah. Yes, just be considerate. And then recycle stuff when you get home mm. as well uh, for the manatees. Right then, we have some exciting news. Don't we, Dan? We do, yes. Last year, we, well this year in fact, we should have run the first ever global bike festival, uh, which was going to take place in Salbach in Austria in June, but for obvious reasons, we had to postpone. Mm. But, we've got a new date. There's some light at the end of the tunnel, there is. isn't there? Looks like things might be on the up for the whole world. 
uh, with this vaccine and potential end to the COVID-19 pandemic. So fingers crossed, if all goes to plan around the world, we'll be running it the, uh, next year, shall I say, from the 17th to the 20th of June, again in the original planned destination of Salbach in Austria. Yeah. And it's Sai's birthday on the 21st as well, so we can have a big 24-hour party. So going from the last night uh, through the night, we can start celebrating your birthday at midnight and then on the plane on the way home. That's cool, because last year, or this year rather, the dates would have coincided with my birthday, and I thought that would be a great celebration, whereas this time, yeah, I was a bit miffed that I might <laughs> be able to celebrate. We can celebrate. celebrate, we can celebrate. Well, yeah. What's a, what's a day early between friends, mm. anyway? Um, now, their website uh, will be uh, taking pre-orders for tickets, so uh, so make sure you check out uh, globalbikefestival.com. We'd also like to say a big thank you to all of you uh, who have rolled your tickets over from 2020 into 2021. Mm. I'm just hoping, Dan, that the curse of GCN doesn't extend to global pandemics, because... It probably um, will, will it? Yeah, because we, we really, you know... Quite like it to go. We'll save the 24 hour birthday party for your 40th year or two after that. Oh, mate, there's a long time to wait. <laughs> mm. Hack forward slash bodge of the week now. Uh, next week's are already up on the app for you to vote on. You've been voting on the previous weeks now, and we're about to decide whether we think they are hacks or bodges, starting with Clement SD. Uh, cassette Christmas tree. Came across oh. this on my local online bicycle classified site today. Yours for only 40 bucks. Nice. Dan, that is definitely what we should do with all those camera low 11 to We should 23 get more than cassettes. 40 bucks for each cassette, shouldn't we? Without the effort of making them into a Christmas tree, surely? Well, as you know, I would have thought Campagnolo Christmas tree. Collector's item, that. Yeah, like maybe 250. Yep, for sure. Anyway, uh, I'd, say that's, <laughs> I'd say that's a hack. I particularly like the. Uh, the bike chain stuff. Yeah, it looks great, doesn't it? They've done Very a good job cool. with that. But presumably an old worn out cassette. Don't waste a new one. No, good point that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so hack from me? Yep, hack from me as 76 well. 76% of you thought that was a hack as well. Um, rightly so. I'll be feeling festive. I mean, it looks festive enough, innit? We're going to give a hack for everything today, are we? <laughs> are you feeling that festive? No, only festive things get a hack. Well, I'll have a go at this one, Dogma F10 then. Adjustable height desk for indoor cycling. Not a desk, but it does hold my laptop and it works my indoor rides. I think that's pretty cool, isn't it? I wonder what bike Dogma F10's got. You just have to be careful if you've got that type of clamping system if you've got a carbon laptop. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you want to you want to clamp the seat post of the, uh, of the <laughs> yeah. laptop, don't you? As opposed to the, uh, the top Well, it does the job, there. doesn't it? I mean, there are neater options and uh, yeah, I guess you have to use that every time or remove it every time you want to then use your, your bike stand for what it's made for. But I'll go hack because it's Christmas and I'm feeling festive too. There we go then. Um, what? Mm. I think it's a bodge, quite okay. frankly. Yeah. Right. Well, you're Sorry, in the minority mate. side. 38 versus 62, oh, I'm really? afraid. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm pleased to see that you lot are still feeling festive as well. Uh, right. Next up, we have this one sent in by Lee G, uh, which is just genius. Stick together. Had a major fail on a local off-road loop. Lost a bolt keeping the rear triangle together. Use this stick to get me home. Now, that is a trail side maintenance hack <laughs> and no mistake look at that you know regular viewers of gcm will know that we like a stick picked up from the roadside to prop up our you know priceless bikes with but that i've never thought of sticking one through a failed pivot bolt before. well i've never had a failed pivot bolt i must admit no i haven't either actually <laughs> lucky things have you got your home it's a hack from me yeah i think there's a hack from me as well uh, how long do you reckon it lasted I don't know. I don't know if it says. But anyway, 54% of people went with hack for that one, so a bit on the fence with regards to the twig. Um, but... I thought you were going to go with a pun there about fences and wood, but never mind. No, I clear. left that. Uh, well Bart Smollickson. Bike bench. Two old BMX pegs. Had amazing times on them. Uh, on my little workbench, updated to a bike repair stand. In the front peg, I did an axle with a quick lock. Don't know the correct word. And in the back, they are just two wooden plates. Carbon loves them. Feel free to comment. Well, we will. Yeah. I like that, Dan. <laughs> we didn't, didn't have much to comment on, actually. No, we didn't really. Having, having built up the comments. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that is... That's reminiscent of a homemade version of what most professional bike mechanics use in the world, so, isn't it? They've always got the ones where the forks lock in at the front and it holds up the bottom bracket underneath, and that's basically what that does. Yeah, very good. Yeah, the only problem with that clamping mechanism is it's not very good for bodging your laptop into no. when you're Zwifting. So, uh, so otherwise, I'd give that a hack. Yeah, me too. Uh, well, 84% of you lot thought that was a hack as well. That's an astonishingly high number. Well done. Fairly simple. Maybe, maybe just an online campaigning to generate some 
Hack votes. True that. Maybe it was the reference to BMX, which uh, which everyone's into now. Hank's been doing it. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Uh, right. Then we have this one sent in by you and Rob Mason, two thousand and five. Um, a tandem tall bike. Oh my word! This looks like something that Dunkin' Donuts uh, might have <laughs> dreamt up. Um, me and a mate in year 10 at college in New Zealand decided to get adventurous. The rest is kind of self-explanatory. That is cool, isn't it? Fair play, guys. I expect Connor would like to ride that, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I, suspect, I suspect Connor would just gently swing a leg over and uh, away he goes. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I'm going with Hack. I think I'm but I've go just seen the results, which is why I said it in the way I did. Only 35% of people said that homemade tool bike tanner was a hack. Imagine doing that in school. It's got to be a hack, surely. Absolutely. Hack yeah. from me as well. You lot need to feel a bit more festive. Exactly. Well, yeah. you've got one week to feel more festive when it comes to GCN shows. Next week will be the last before Christmas. Uh, so try and make yourselves feel generous. Yeah, we'll throw some tinsel up. It'll look great in here, won't it? <laughs> as ever. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle as modelled by Dan. All you've got to do is put a witty caption to a photo that we're about to give you in the comments section down below. We'll start as ever with the results from last week, which is this intriguing picture of Dan looking remarkable. Thanks, Si. Si. If you didn't see last week's show, that is my head, my legs and Hank's mid. Hence the six pack. Uh, the winner of the caption this week is Carl Futter. Hank forward slash bodge of the week. <laughs> so I picked that one. Genius. Carl, you and I think on the same wavelength. <laughs> Fantastic. Although that was far funnier than I could ever create. Um, we do also want to give an honourable mention uh, to Lotta Gale. Well, we? there were a lot of mentions along the same lines as Lotta about dank. Right. Okay, so she said, looking dank. Brackets, Dan's too old for this one, mm. which it turns out he was, because you had to Google that one as well. Well, I went on Urban Dictionary. Ooh. There are there are a lot of different definitions of dank. Um, I shall read a couple of them out now. Uh, it can be a great cannabis structure. Oh, really? Apparently. Uh, an unpleasantly nasty, moist or wet. It can be another way of just saying cool. That's the way I know it as. Yeah. It's what the cool I imagine that's say. what they were talking about with the picture. That's well dank. Well, I, I didn't want to say that. It's perhaps unpleasantly nasty, moist or wet. Or oh, there is a dank beer. That's what I know it as. Uh, which is very hoppy, a cloudy IPA with a high alcohol content. Perfect for you then. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Anyway, yeah, I was too old to yep. understand. I had to look it up. Uh, this week's photo comes from the super prestige cyclocross from Bohm. Uh, Cy is going to get you started with this one. Oh no, really? Okay. <clears throat> The first ever UCI synchronised cyclocross world championships got off to a flying start. Um, or oh, this does not feel like the world's most comfortable saddle, but I love the anti-gravity. Hmm. Uh, anyway. Lot to go on, I feel, with this one. There are three options there for you, but I'm sure that you can do better. Leave your captions in the comment section down below. I think anti-gravity, I think you're right. I think that's going to be a winner for this one. Just before we let you know what's coming up on GCN over the next seven days, a few of our favourite comments from the previous seven, uh, starting with one that came underneath last week's show. Can someone please buy Manon a battery for the clock in her garage? It said five past two for over a month. That came in from <sighs> Alex P. Well, Alex not, P, sorry. Not the only uh, Manon garage controversy of the week, because a fair few of you recognised Manon's garage from the Zwift World Championship video, which went up on Saturday. Uh, because it turns out that Max and Manon share the same garage. Do they? They do. Oh. I mean, they literally do. And someone had put a battery in the clock by Saturday. So, uh, oh, by Wednesday, whatever. Oh, the... They put the time right. They did. Uh, we're talking about that video. We've got some other cracking comments from now about Max Stedman. Uh, the close-up wrote in saying, Max is a rider who I hope makes it far in cycling. Keep it up. Well, I would agree with the close-up there. Yeah, he's got a contract for next year. So, uh, nice. there we go. He's, he's all good. Uh, Andy Zephyr pointed to, to Max's heart rate, 200 plus beats per minute. Is that kid a cyborg? Perhaps he's a hummingbird. Um, <laughs> it, what, it, he did go deep. What was amazing, just watching it drop back down again. That's yeah. never happened to me in a Zwift race before. Really? Once my heart rate goes up, it's there. Is it? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I haven't seen 200 for a while, but then if you go on the 220 minus your age thing, I can't get more than 190 anyway. <laughs> Another 30 year old gag there for you. Uh, Hank does BMX. Arthur Bound Mazzoni put seven years and a lot of videos after Dan promises BMX content in the first ever GCN show. We finally have it. Yes. There we go. Yeah. I mean, it has been stuck in, uh, in sort of like 
production for a long time. It has, really, yeah, well, it? seven years, eight years. Yeah, first eight years, show, yeah. pretty much, in January. Oh, yes, your eight-year anniversary in January. Mm, there we go. It is. Uh, right, uh, and then lastly, um, Tom and Rachel's First Dance, uh, which is a channel that I don't quite <laughs> know what, what the content would be on there. But anyway, they've said uh, part three of GCN trying to kill Hank. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Um, part three? About yeah. part ten by now, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, to be fair, most of the time it's Hank trying to kill Hank. Um, nothing yeah. to do with us. Uh, anyway, coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday, we are going to tell you how to stay motivated over the winter months, which can always be hard, can't it? however into your cycling you are. Uh, on Thursday, we've got a train session over on GCN Training, uh, which you can look forward to. No music on the Thursday ones, are there? That's uh, right. So music Mondays, no music Thursdays. Mm. So, which is why you and I have been asked to compile a playlist on Spotify and YouTube so that people can dial in, not dial in, as a bit, let's show my age, dank. <laughs> hey! Uh, anyway, we have compiled playlists, that's all you need to know. Mine is um, very cool. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of dollar like on mine. A mixture of 50s and 60s beats in there. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Uh, right then, uh, on Friday, um, it's the finale of Ollie and Manon's Wahoo Suff training transition plan. Uh, so uh, this is their six week getting ready for winter. I think they're both pretty prepped and ready to go, aren't they? But we will find out exactly mm. how things have gone for them. On Saturday, it's the GCN International Presenter Race. Oh yeah, this was a big mm. one. Uh, all GCN presenters uh, lining up on the start line of a bespoke Zwift Criterium race, which was uh, which was super cool uh, and great fun. Mm. So uh, that's not all fantastic. GCN presenters. Um, I managed to skip this one, didn't Someone I? had to commentate, didn't they, mate? Yes, yeah. we'll give the awards out afterwards, which exactly. I enjoyed doing. That was a great race, actually. You must watch that. Mm. Uh, and then on Sunday, it's four versus one, isn't it? Uh, Sai continues to beat more and more people on his time trial bike, but could he beat four? I doubt it. Yeah, yeah just... Just watch it and find out. Well, that brings us to the end of yet another GCN show. I can't believe we've been doing this eight years now. 414 GCN shows, mate. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Won't be long. Well, it will be long till we get to 500. I know. It's over a year. Thinking. Oh, yeah, we're nearly there. But no, it's it takes a long time to rack up mm. GCN shows. We're celebrating 10 years then, if we're still getting another contract. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we'll be celebrating from afar. It's uh, unfortunately a bit yeah. out. Anyway, that's the end. Hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up if you did. See you next week.